Now, the Apostle John, he certainly knew what took place in the upper room. But unlike the other three Gospel writers, John leaves out what many would regard as one of the most vital moments in the life of Jesus, the moment when he first instituted Holy Communion. But nowhere in John's account of the night before Jesus' death do we find Jesus breaking bread and calling it his body, or pouring the wine and calling it his blood. John leaves it out of his account of the Last Supper. And John tells us about another thing that Jesus did, which the other Gospels left out. Why would a writer do that? I mean, if we only had John's Gospel, we might think there should be two sacraments, a sacrament of baptism and a sacrament of washing feet. Perhaps the Holy Spirit was concerned that an aspect of the meaning of the Lord's Supper could get lost if people only focused on the specific symbolism of the bread and wine. And it may be that in John's Gospel, the Holy Spirit wants to remind the church, who well knew about Holy Communion, what the results of participating in Holy Communion should be. Let's look at some of the verses again. Verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table. And we move immediately from all things being placed into Jesus' hands, using those hands to wash the disciples' dusty feet. And no doubt at the time everybody was speechless, maybe embarrassed. Teachers shouldn't do things like that. That was for the lowliest servant. And Peter, who was usually the boldest in relation to Jesus, he said in amazement, verse 6, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Lord, are you going to do this pitiful thing for me? Are you going to be a slave for me? Verse 8, you will never wash my feet. That is to say, I will never let you humble yourself for me. I'm not going to let you become so low for me. Now, in those days, in that hot climate, you'd have bathed completely before you went out to dinner, and on the way, only your feet in their sandals would get dirty. And the message is, we do need to be made completely clean by Jesus. We have to accept the humility of God in Jesus' death for us on the cross. And that is a once-for-all moment. We come to Christ in that way and are made new, made clean, born again. But we also need to be constantly cleansed from our contact with the world. And we need to be constantly cleansed from our contact with the world by a reminder of Jesus' humility. Verse 14 if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Verse 16. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now, it is a strange thing that we are not always filled with love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We may rather be selfish and concerned for our own status. We may not want to serve them, but rather want to be served by them. We may not want to carry out humble acts of service. But what happened on that first Maundy Thursday in the upper room should drive us to carry out acts of humble service for other brothers and sisters. And if you like having Holy Communion, which we're not doing at the moment, and we're not going to have Holy Communion until we can have it together again, but taking Holy Communion means a repeated being cleansed as we confess our sins and turn back to Christ. And it also means committing ourselves to humble service as we remember the way our Saviour humbly served us. 
Jesus wanted to assure his disciples that their place in the kingdom is secure. He had made them clean. And when we become Christians, Christ's most precious blood has washed our souls. Our sinful bodies are made clean by his body. But we need the foot washing of regularly being made humble before Jesus. We need to be brought down a peg or two, embarrassed by what Jesus has done for us. And then, like Jesus, be liberated to think of others. Now, no one in England needs or wants their feet to be washed today. We wear shoes and socks. But if you really want to do something humble for someone, I don't know, maybe you should clean their car or, or clean their shoes. That might be the sort of sacrament that would speak to outsiders of humble love for others. So think now perhaps of an act of lowly service that you could do for one of your brothers or sisters in Christ and make a mental note to do that when you have the opportunity. And let us remember what Christ has done for us.